Okay, as you've heard me say a couple of times in the course, is I really believe it's important to not only just talk and write about and read about uh, musical things, although that's important too, but the most important way to get exposed to the different music uh, in the past or different music and cultures, different cultures, is to hear it. And in this case, we can hear and watch a little bit, watch the performers. I think that's helpful in many ways. Uh, and so what we're going to explore now is, if you remember, there are five primary cultures uh, that influence all culture in the Western world, or the, what we call the New World here in the, in the United States, America, Canada, South America, all the New World, the New Discovered World uh, that we live in. And those five cultures are Europe, Africa, specifically West Africa in our case, the Middle East, India, and China. And I showed you those on a map. But now I'd like to focus, let's focus on the three least influential cultures on America first. And that would be uh, India, China, and the Middle East. And so what I'll start with is let's talk about reed instruments and, uh, and woodwind, I should say, and also string instruments. Now, every culture has a string instrument. And the primary early one was, in fact, uh, a one-string instrument, just one string. And it was just played in what they call a drone style. A drone style is when you play one note over and over again, maybe a little rhythm attached to it, and you sing over the top of it, okay? Like that, one pitch played on one string, and then the human sings over the top. This is very common in all cultures. If you think about it, the bed of music bed of rap has that uh, quality as well. There's not a lot of chord changes. It might just be a beat added to a long sustained drone sound so it's nothing new uh, let's take a look at first the chinese sound remember where chinese philosophy was in terms of how they relate to music in the case of the chinese they always uh, felt that uh, you should create music to be in harmony with nature the deity or a godlike thing was never really that much part of their culture although they do have deities in fact i'll tell you a personal story when i was in beijing once I actually went to a Catholic cathedral in Beijing eight, nine years ago, maybe. Um, it's not officially recognized by the Catholic Church in Rome with the Pope, but the Chinese government, who controls everything, realized that uh, old people like me in China, who be were Catholic before the communists took over in 48, uh, would be happier if they could go to church. So I went to this cathedral with some friends of mine, it was very weird. It was just like a Catholic Mass. It was all in Chinese. You could follow it along because it's no, it's no difference. And I think I could count it in one hand anybody that was under 50 at the time now, 67 years old probably. But that's just a little antidote, side note. But let's think about the Chinese who uh, really relate to nature and the sounds of nature. Birds are often imitated. Um, and then the, the Indians, remember, they related to music as... Uh, sound and music is actually being being God. Uh, the sound that that sound itself it, what was was a uh, was God a piece of Him and if you could learn all those little components and so they organized their music into very short little melodies that all meant something uh, mood wise and otherwise and a little bit in rhythms that would be repeated over and over again and then mixed up and things like that. So just the mindset. Let's listen first to. An E E R H U, performed by uh, a Chinese uh, one-string artist, and realize that she's using a bow, and and this is no accident, the bow and a violin and whatever, because the very first string instrument was taken from the experience of shooting a bow and arrow. Man learned to take a string or some sort and stretch it back and put an arrow in it and let go. And when he let go, that bow would make a sound in his ear, his face. They learned later on to take a gourd or a pumpkin or some kind of a, you know, a large fruit of some sort or plant, hollow it out, dry it out, and attach it to the end of the bow, or perhaps in the middle of the bow, at least where the string could travel over the middle of the bow. And they found when you did that, it amplified that bowing sound. Bang, right? Is what they were playing. And that's what you sound like. They sound like amplified uh, bows from a bow and arrow set. But it created that drone. Remember, what? look up drone. 
Um, you'll get a lot of little definitions, but it's at, at low sound. Uh, it's in all cultures that, that a singer would sing over, right? So here's an Iro artist in China. She's very uh, well known for her authentic playing. And you'll see her talk, hear her talk while she plays. Listen to the sound she creates, and she'll, she'll discuss a little bit of what she's doing as well. And it'll be flashed up on the screen in English. Chinese音乐器当中非常具有代表性的一样乐器 因为他的声音跟人的声音很贴合 Next instrument, a one string instrument from India called the Ektara. You might have noticed the last one, she had two strings on it because it's a modern version of it, but she was only playing one. <laughs> and that for many centuries, that's what it was. An Ektara, much smaller in this case. There are some bigger ones. We'll talk to an Ektara. Ektara, Ektara, Ektara. There's, there's, there's a, another instrument that's a little bigger, we'll show you. But this is a simple single string instrument you can see the little bitty piece of wood on top of the round little cup like looking bottom there that has a, a, a animal skin stretched over it and a single string and the bow is involved and uh, it's rather interesting uh, this is now india a slightly different treatment to um, the one string instrument basically same instrument just approached differently and makes different sounds Now there you should be able to tell how the Indian use of the single string, much more limited in melody. The Chinese uh, uh, performer was sliding all over, lots of notes high and low. But remember the Indian uh, culture believes that sound is God and comes in little small little chunks and you can kind of see he was demonstrating La da di da da di da la da da di. Those are little chunks of repeated notes. And so now you're going to see, we're going to move to the Middle East. And before we do that, I'm going to show you a quick map of why the Middle East is so dramatically different uh, and, and, and explain that to you uh, in terms of its geography and its culture. 